In this lesson, we're going to conquer the pen tool. The unfortunate part about the pen tool is that trying to explain it and how it works is a little bit like describing how to ride a bicycle. You really just have to try it, and once you get a feel for it, it's really easy. We're going to go ahead and we're going to start with the upper left hand corner. We're going to start by learning how to create a straight path using the pen tool in Photoshop. So from the tool palette, let's select the pen tool. Now I don't want to create shape layers, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click the second icon in the layers palette. The first icon would create what's called a shape layer. It's the second icon that we want because we just want to create a path. Now I'll zoom in on this image so we can see it a little bit larger and then navigate up to the upper left hand corner and we're going to use this as a template. Now creating straight paths is fairly easy with a pen tool. If you click on the first square and release the mouse, then you can move the pen tool to the second square down near B and click to draw a straight line. If I were to click at C right now, Photoshop would continue on the path. I don't want that. I want to create a separate path at C. So we need to learn how to end a path. If I select the direct selection or the path selection tool and click anywhere in my image, it will click off my previous path. And I know that that path is no longer selected because it doesn't have the anchor points at the start and the end of the path. If I click on the path to activate it, we can see those anchor points again. But I don't want them, so I'm going to click to the right of the path to end that first path so we can move on to the second path. Now let's go ahead and select our pen tool again, click at C, and then click at D to create a path. If you don't want to continually go back to the path selection and the direct selection tool, while you still have the pen tool selected, you can use the keyboard modifier, the control key. The control key on Windows or the command key on Mac will temporarily give you the path selection tools so that you can click in your image away from the path to deselect it. If I wanted to modify this first path, then I would go ahead and select the direct selection tool and I could click on the path itself in which case I could move it or reposition it, or I can click on the endpoints or the anchor point of the path. As soon as I click on the anchor point, it fills in so that it's not a hollow anchor point, but a solid anchor point, and then I can move or reposition that anchor point. I'll go ahead and click to the right to end that path, and we'll start another new one. I'll select the pen tool, and I'll click at E, then I'll hold down the shift key because that's going to constrain my path to 45 degree angle. I'll click at F, down at G, up at H, and then at I. To end my path, I'll hold down the control key, command key on Mac, and go ahead and click away. If I select my direct selection tool, I can click and drag to select more than one anchor point. For example, I just clicked and dragged up at the top of this first path which selected the anchor point at F and the anchor point at H. Then I can move or reposition those two anchor points and they'll reposition in tandem. I'll go ahead and move them on top of F and H. If I click on the anchor point at G, I can go ahead and reposition that anchor point. If I click on a line segment, I can go ahead and reposition that segment. So if I want to reposition the segment between F and G, I'll click on that line and drag to move it. Okay, let's go ahead and move down to J, K, and L. I want to select my pen tool again, and I'll click first at J, then at K, then at L. When I position my cursor back on top of the first anchor point that I clicked, you'll notice that the icon for my pen tool changes and I get a little zero or a little O next to the pen tool. That tells me that if I click 
I'll close the path. So if I click with the pen tool, when I see that little circle next to it, that will close my path so that I now have one solid path. If I select my direct selection or my path selection, I can click to alter the line segments or change them, or I can click on an individual anchor point and reposition it. Let's go ahead and try that again. I'll grab my pen tool and I'll start at the topmost anchor point here of the star and I'll click around the star. Again, I'm clicking, not clicking and dragging, just clicking around the star until I find myself at the starting point, in which case when I position my pen tool on top of that first anchor point, I'll get the little circle icon. I know that I would close the path if I click now, so I'll go ahead and click. And sure enough, I get a closed path that I can then click and change. If I click on the path segment, or if I click on the anchor point, or if I want to reposition the entire path, I can go ahead and click with the path selection tool. You'll notice that when I select the path selection tool, all of the anchor points are filled in. None of them are hollow anymore, which tells me that I would move the entire path. Now paths are like grids and guides. They don't print and they're like selections in the way that they lay on top of all of the layers in your layers palette. So I can make a path while I have any layer selected in my layers palette. It's only when I start working with a path that the layer that I'm targeting makes the difference. Okay, we've now completed five different straight paths. We've got one here, two here, three, four, and five. And you'll notice that Photoshop is keeping track of all of these paths. You've got what's called a work path over in your paths palette. If we want to save this work path, we can either use the fly out menu or we can just double click where it says work path. That brings up the save path dialog box and we can go ahead and name these straight lines and click OK. And now that path would be saved with the document. I'll go ahead and click off of that path. You'll notice as soon as I do that, you can no longer see those paths. If I wanted to see them again, I would click on the straight lines path. We also have another path in the paths palette that we're going to use a little bit later called editing paths, but we're not going to use that now. I'll go ahead and click anywhere in the blank area of my paths palette that will hide my straight lines and then we'll slide over to the right hand side of this template where we'll start creating some new paths. You've mastered the straight path but now we're going to move on to the curved paths. Curved paths are achieved by clicking and dragging with the pen tool. So far all we've done is clicked with it. But here we're going to click where it says A on the anchor point here and we're going to click and drag up to the red dot. What that does is it starts the direction of the curve in an upward direction. Then I'm going to click and drag at B down towards the red dot. You can see that we've created a curve that starts up and is now going down. If I click and drag up at C, I get the bottom part of the wave. And then if I click and drag at D, I get the top part of the wave. So it's very easy by clicking and dragging, you determine the direction of your curve. Now I want to go ahead and end that path. So I'll hold down my control key to temporarily access my direct selection and click in my image to click off of that path. Let's go ahead and select the direct selection tool for a minute and click back on that path. You'll notice now that we're dragging curved paths, we have these additional direction lines that come off of every anchor point. So if I click on the first anchor point, you'll see the two direction lines that determine the direction of the Bezier path. At the tip of those direction lines are the direction points. If I click and drag, I can change the direction or the path of the curve. 
I'll go ahead and leave that right back up at the top. We'll click on the anchor point at B. Now if I reposition the anchor point, you can see that that also changes the shape of the curve. So I can either click on the anchor point or on the direction lines or on the path. And if I click on the path, the direction lines will automatically be changed for me, just like when I click on an anchor point and change the path. Let's go ahead and click off of the path and we'll start a new path at E. We're going to click and drag up to the red dot but then at F, instead of clicking and dragging down to get a nice mountain shape path, we're going to click at F and drag up. And when we do this, we get an S shaped path. Now we want to create a circle. So I'll hold down my control key or my command key to end the path at E and F. And I'll start at G. I'll click and drag up to the red dot at G. And then I'll click at H and drag down to the red dot. Then if I position my cursor over the anchor point at G, I get the pen tool with the circle, which means I'm going to close the path. And because I started this path by clicking and dragging up, there's a direction line already at this anchor point pointing down. So if I just click at G, it will automatically close my path, creating a circle. If we take a look at our paths palette, you can see we've created an additional work path. Let's go ahead and double click on that and we'll call this curved paths. Click OK and save that. It's no longer a work path, it's now a saved path with the file. Now I'm going to scroll down and over to the left hand side again so we can work with a combination of straight and curves paths and also learn how to change the direction of a path. Okay, I'll select my pen tool and I'm going to start at A. I'm going to click and drag up to the red dot. Then I'll position my cursor over B and I'll click and drag down to the red dot. You can see the two direction lines, the one that I drag down to the red dot and the one going in the other direction. If I want to change the direction of my path to create an M shape, instead of the standard shape which would be starting in the other direction, it would be the bottom part of the wave. See, if I click at C right now, you can see the direction is going down. I don't want that, so I'll select Edit, Undo and instead I need to force the pen tool to change directions. The easiest way to do that is to hold down the Alt key or the Option key and click and drag on the anchor point in the direction that you want it to go. You'll notice I'm not dragging a path right now, I'm dragging the new direction point. So let me do that again, I'll undo that for a minute. Currently the direction line is facing downward, so my next path would start in a downward motion. I want to break that, so I'm going to hold down my Option key or my Alt key, click and drag on that anchor point in the direction that I want the next curve to go. So in this case I want it to be the other side of the M, so I'll click and drag up with the Option key selected to the red dot, and then I'll let go. Then, when I click at C and drag down, because my direction line originally started up, my path will start the upward motion of the other hump of the M and then come down because I've clicked at C and I'm dragging down. Okay, let me hold down my control key and that would be the command key on Mac and click off of that path and we'll move on to D, E, F, and G. I'm going to start by just clicking, not clicking and dragging, but just clicking at D. And then I'll click at E because I want to create a straight line between D and E. Now at this point, I want to start a curved line. So if I click on the anchor point at E and drag up to the red dot, that will drag up a direction line off of the anchor point that we set at E. 
Now I'll click at F and drag down to the red dot. That's going to continue my curve until it comes down at F. Now if I were to click at G, because I've just set this direction line, I would get a curve and that's not what I want, so I'll undo that. I need to tell Photoshop to stop making curve lines and return back to making straight lines. So I'll hold down my Alt or my Option key and I'll click on the anchor point at F. You'll notice when I clicked on that anchor point it deleted the direction line so that now I'm free to simply click at G to continue on my straight line. Okay, I'll hold down my control key and click again to click off of that path. And now we're going to repeat part of that. We're going to go from a straight line to a curve line, but this time instead of the nice mountain shape, we're going to do the S shape. And then we're going to stop that curve line and return back to a straight line. So I'll click first at H, and then I'll click at I to set my anchor point. Then I'll click and drag on that anchor point down to the red dot because that's setting my direction line. Then I'll click at J and drag down again to get that nice S curve. But I don't want that curve to continue. I need the direction line that came out going in the opposite direction in order to make this curve, but I don't need the direction line here which starts my next curve. So I have to hold down my Option or my Alt key and I'll click on that anchor point to remove this direction line. Once that direction line is removed, I can then create my straight line by clicking at K. Okay, let's go ahead and look at our paths palette. Hmm, something very interesting happened. Did you notice that we are still adding more paths to the curved paths path? That's because I didn't tell you to click off of the path. So when we continued drawing more and more paths, Photoshop simply added them to the path that we had selected. So that's okay for now, but I do want you to click in the empty area of the paths palette before we move on to the final area, which is how to edit paths. So just click anywhere in this empty area, and then we'll scroll over to the last area here on editing paths. For this portion, we're going to use some paths that were already created. So in the paths palette, click on the path called editing paths and you'll see some paths appear in the image area. We're going to make a straight line out of this first curved path. So let's select the direct selection tool and click on this path. You'll notice that there are three different anchor points making up this path. I have my initial anchor point, I have the anchor point in the middle, and then I have this last anchor point. I want to go ahead and delete this center anchor point so that I get a straight line connecting the two remaining anchor points. In order to do this, I'll select my Delete Anchor Point tool, and I'll click on this anchor point to delete it, and Photoshop will connect the remaining two anchor points with a path. Now let's go ahead and add an anchor point to this next path. I'm going to select the Add Anchor Point tool and I'm going to click anywhere in that path to add an anchor point. Then when I position my cursor on top of the point, it automatically gives me the arrow so that I can click and drag up that point. But you'll notice that it's added a curved anchor point. I wanted it to add a straight line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the Convert Point tool. And the Convert Point tool will convert this from a curved line to a straight line if I click right on top of the anchor point. So I'll go ahead and click there and you can see I no longer have direction lines. I have just a straight path. Let's go ahead and practice a little bit more with the Convert Anchor Point. I've got a path down here that's 
kind of looks like a flower here that I want to change into a star shape. So basically I want to remove all of the direction lines. I want straight paths as opposed to the curved ones that are there. So when I position my convert anchor point tool on top of the anchor points here at the points of the star or at the tip of the flower petals, I get the little anchor point, the convert anchor point icon and I can click and you can see, you can watch as those nice round points get converted into straight points and I get my star shape. Now if I wanted to do the opposite then I could go ahead and click on this other path down here and when I position my cursor on top of the anchor point I would click and drag out to the right to drag out direction lines. So again that's just clicking on an anchor point and dragging out. And as I click and drag I'm clicking and dragging to the right as we go around the circle. If I drag the other way I'm going to get this kind of weird looking path. So I want to make sure to click and drag if you can think of this in a clockwise direction just continue on around here until I've changed the star into the in the middle into a flower. Then I'll just click outside of that path in order to deselect it. Okay, now I know that was a lot of information on how paths work, but it's kind of like telling you how to ride the bicycle. It's a lot of information, but you really, the more you ride the bicycle or the more you use the pen tool, the easier it will become. So now I'm going to go ahead and close this document and we're going to create a path around this mask of a cat and we're going to do so using this template. So I'll go ahead and zoom in here and we're going to start at A. So I'll select my pen tool and I'm going to click at A and drag up to the magenta dot. That's going to start my curve or my path up in the direction up around the ear. Then I'm going to click at B and drag again to the magenta dot. Then I'll go ahead and hold down my Option or my Alt key because if I click at C, you see the path that I'm going to get. That's not the path that I want. So I'll undo that and I'm going to click at B with the Option key held down to remove that direction line. That way when I click and drag to the magenta dot at C, I get the nice curve that goes in towards the ear. Then I'll use my space bar and move down a little bit so that we can see the next anchor point which will be set at D while I drag down to the magenta dot. I get the nice curve going around the face. Then I'll click at E and drag up again towards the dot. Click at F and drag up towards that magenta dot. Then use my space bar to scoot up. Got one more easy point. I'm going to click at G and drag up. Now I need to change directions. So I'm going to hold down the Option or the Alt key to get rid of that direction line. And then I'll click at H, drag near the cat's eye there to that magenta dot. Again, now I need to change directions. This time, instead of just holding down the Option key and clicking, I'm going to hold down the Option key or the Alt key and then I'm going to start my direction line by dragging to this yellow dot here. Because if I just delete the direction line, I'm not going to be able to get this nice curve. I actually need to tell Photoshop which direction to start the curve in in this case. So holding down the Option or the Alt key, I click and drag to the yellow dotted H and then I'll go ahead and close my path. You'll see when I position my cursor on top of the dot at A, I get the circle icon that will allow me to close the path. But that wasn't exactly what I had in mind. This line here, I need to edit my path. So I'll select my direct selection tool, click on the anchor point at A, and then I'm going to break the direction line. I'm going to tell it to not go in this direction. I need it to go in the other direction. In order to break the direction line, I'm going to select my Convert Point tool 
and click on the end of the direction point. I'm going to click and drag that direction point up to the yellow dot at A and that will go ahead and change the direction of my Bezier path so that it fits the top area here of the cat between the two ears. If we hide the template and we hide the background, you can see the path that you've created around the cat. In the Paths palette, it's called a work path. If you were going to save this path with the document, you need to double click on it and change it into a path. Otherwise, if you don't save the path and you draw another path without that path being selected, you'll lose your work path. And if you save the document without saving that path in it, you'll lose the path as well. So now that you have the path selected, we'll go ahead and click on the template layer here. I actually want to hide that, so let's click on the eye icon to hide the template. And now you can do whatever you want with this path. You might want to make it into a selection, for example. I'll go ahead and from the Paths palette, I'll use the flyout and say Make Selection. And I'm going to add a 0.3 pixel feather radius here to my selection. That just selects the cat. Now if I zoom out, we can go ahead and make a change to that. Maybe we want to go in and change the hue and saturation or the curves. I can go ahead and do that by selecting the Curves Adjustment Layer, or maybe I want to change Hue and Saturation. I'll select the Hue and Saturation Adjustment Layer, and we'll change the hue of the cat. Let's change it 180 degrees, and just decrease the saturation a little bit. So you can see how handy it is to create your paths or create your outlines around your hard edge objects with these paths. When you start getting really good with the pen tool, you'll find that it's much easier to create a path than it ever was to create a selection using the lasso tool or the magic wand tool because you have more control over the path. And at any time, you can go back to the path. I'll zoom in here. And you can make adjustments to the path. So if it's not at the exact spot that you want it, you could select your direct selection tool click on that path and then change the direction lines or change where that point is on the path in order to refine that path, which is very difficult to do with a lasso tool. It's also very difficult to make really nice straight or curving edges by hand without using the pen tool to create these Bezier paths. Just as you can turn a path into a selection, you can also turn a selection into a path. So for example, if I grab the magic wand tool and I click inside the area of the mouth here, of the cat's mouth, and I maybe I need to increase my tolerance here a little bit. Let's increase that to about 45. And then I will click again. That will select the entire area here inside the cat's mouth. Well, just as I could turn a path into a selection, I can turn this selection into a path. I can use the flyout menu and select Make Work Path. I give the work path a tolerance. The lower the tolerance, the more accurate the path will be, but the more points that Photoshop will add. The number of points isn't nearly as important as it used to be. Every one of the points that you add or the anchor points that you add is seven lines of postscript code. So when printers didn't have very much RAM, you didn't want to create paths that had hundreds and hundreds of anchor points. But for an instant like this, there's a very small path that it's going to create. It won't put too many points on that path. So I'm going to go ahead and decrease the tolerance to one and then click OK. You can see that Photoshop has created a work path out of that selection. Now I would probably have to go in here and just refine the path a little bit. I could click on the anchor points or on the direction lines just to make that path fit the shape of the mouth a little bit closer. Once I've done that, I would want to save this work path. Go ahead and save this as mouth. And that would save my path. 
That way I could use this path later. I could go ahead and load it up as a selection. In fact, I might want to load it as a selection right now. Instead of using the flyout menu, I'm going to click the selection icon down at the bottom of the paths palette to load that as a selection so that I can return to my hue and saturation adjustment layer and fill the mouth area with black just in case that hue and saturation is colorizing that area. So I'll select edit and then fill and I'll fill this with black at 100% you can see now in the mask, if I Option or Alt click on it, that's now filled that region so that whatever I do with this adjustment, it will not affect that area inside the mouth, just like it's not affecting the area outside of the mask. And once you've created the path, you could also drag this path to another document if you wanted to use this shape as a vector mask like we did in the previous lesson.